So you're starting your next project and you're trying to figure out, should I use something like WordPress or Squarespace, one of those plug and play systems, or should I hand code my website? So that's what I wanted to go over today. And I wanted to give you a few examples, talk a little bit about when you should use one or the other and go through my thought process and give you a few examples. So uh, this video actually stems from a video that I already did about my personal website. So I took a website that you can normally use something like WordPress for. So a portfolio website, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's just a blogging platform. And I decided to hand code this website and make a few videos on that. And I'm actually putting together a full tutorial on that. But uh, the problem with that right away was people thinking that uh, this is just how I always do this. And maybe that that was my recommendation for all the websites. So right away, I got the people telling me I could use WordPress for that, something simpler. And then the people that I'm really concerned about are the ones that are a little bit newer thinking that you should always hand code something like that. Now, uh, just to keep it simple, um, I'll answer why I built that my personal website that way. But just to keep it simple, I personally believe if a website is small enough, something like a portfolio website, I don't think you should reinvent the wheel. Now, if you're just starting out and you're trying to put together websites, depending on why you're doing this, and it may be you're freelancing, putting, putting them together for clients, I don't think you should try to hand code everything by yourself. So that's kind of my rule is um, if the site is simple enough, use something like WordPress, a built-in system like that. And with that, you're going to have a lot of themes to work with, a lot of plugins. And once you learn how to use those platforms, you're going to be able to put up websites within hours. Maybe um, it's going to be really quick because they're really plug and play once you understand it. And it's really easy to get a site up and running. So I wrote out an article. So the article is going to go with this. And this video is going to be on that article within my website. And um, a few examples I wanted to bring up are going to be three websites that I think that you should probably build out in WordPress if you understand it. So uh, the first one's going to be small business websites. So I've built out a ton of websites like this. I don't know. It's got to be over a hundred by now. Uh, we used to do a lot of this and for small business websites, they usually don't require that much. They're usually um, just some kind of homepage, just a, a layout that displays the business, maybe some information, usually a contact form along with some images. So for something like that, if you're not that experienced in building out your own websites and hand coding, it might be worth learning WordPress. And that way you can get these sites out and going really fast. And uh, it shouldn't take more than a couple of hours, maybe a couple of days, depending on your skill level and the complexity of that business and what the requirements are. Now, my next website on that list would be something like a blog or a personal site. So this is actually very similar to a small business website. And the reason why I separated this is because uh, this is something that a lot of people will be building out for portfolios for themselves. Maybe you're building this out for a blogger. Um, on these websites, outside of what the small business might require, you're usually going to have a place where you need to write articles for. So this could be for SEO, um, just to put out some content. And these platforms, specifically WordPress, already has this built in. And specifically what I'm talking about is that rich text editor and the ability to write these posts. It's usually pretty simple. They already have the tagging features. And the whole system is pretty much built for blogs. So for something like this, uh, it's actually pretty complicated if you want to hand code this stuff. So for my site, there are a lot of features that I have to spend hours in hand coding these in, and it would be much easier to hand code this in or to use WordPress and just get this up and going because the platforms are already built for that. Now, the next site on that list is going to be an e-commerce website. And I listed the e-commerce sites twice. So I have this under the hand coded section and under the WordPress section. I'll explain why in a second. So for an e-commerce platform, this is where WordPress is really cool. Now I've built out a couple of these. My wife has actually built out her own website this way. And with an e-commerce website, there's a plugin called WooCommerce. There's probably a few more out there that really make it easy to create that shopping cart, uh, that whole, um, that buying process and actually adding items to a cart, storing it in the database, um, and even payment integrations. So something like WooCommerce already has this built in for you. And it's pretty easy to integrate this into a WordPress site. So someone like my wife that wasn't that technical at the time was able to build out her own website and was actually able to add in that payment integration using PayPal, Stripe, and so on. So WordPress really takes care of that. And it just really shows you the, the complexity of a site that you can actually put together. So you can go quite far with that. But um, an e-commerce website, if simple enough, the features aren't too crazy, you want to sell a couple, a couple of digital or physical products, uh, might actually work for that. So this actually leads me perfectly into my next point. My wife's website, it was an e-commerce platform, but we got to the point where we needed too many customizations. So that site is actually down. I'm actually doing a full rebuild. And some of the features we actually needed to add were something like an admin dashboard. Uh, we wanted to be able to recommend products based off of what a customer used. And we wanted a place for that customer to be able to log in and actually see their previously purchased products and stuff like that. So um, in theory, maybe it could have been done with WordPress, but 
uh, this is where I started feeling too confined. So once she gave me kind of the scope of what she wanted, I started feeling very limited and I decided that we need to hand code this thing and I'll feel much more free at that point. So that's a perfect segue into my next point and the examples that I'm going to bring up uh, for sites that I should probably start using, uh, start hand coding with. So kind of a criteria that I have is if that site can be built out and it can be built out in a platform like WordPress, I'll try to do that. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible, or at least I did this in the past. Now, once the complications and the features start going past that, that's when hand coding a site starts becoming necessary and I move on to that point. So the three sites here, the first one's gonna be a laboratory management system. So these are just three examples that I've actually built out. Uh, this was a platform that I built for a lab. Um, just way too many customizations. We needed all the search functionality. We needed to be able to graph data, chart it. Um, we needed to send out automatic reports and it was really uh, intense and we had to have laboratory calculations. So we needed to um, look at samples, analyze them. So I had to have a lot of custom features in there. Uh, no way I can use WordPress for something like that. So that's one example. Now, another one, this was a membership website. I think in theory, something like this could be possible with WordPress, but for the specs that I had for uh, user registration, password reset, um, all the functionality for maybe adding an item to a user that purchased it and limiting uh, a product to based on what a user purchased, that's something that uh, I didn't feel comfortable with WordPress. So that was hand coded. Now, the last one in this example is gonna be an e-commerce website. I know I listed that out for WordPress, but um, at this point, a lot of e-commerce sites start having a lot, of uh, a lot of features that might be just too complicated for something like WordPress. So depending on the exact system, maybe you wanna store inventory and all that, uh, you have a way you wanna display that data. An e-commerce platform that's a little bit more complex might be better off hand-coded. Again, depending on what the site is, but if it's starting to get more advanced, you're building this out for a company, um, that might have a lot of products and the products start getting really diverse. At this point, you might want to hand code it. So this is where you're starting to see the basic sites, the ones that just have the plug and play with WordPress. And then the sites start getting more complex. The requests start coming in. That's when you might want to consider hand coding this. Um, and also uh, something that I wanted to mention, depending on the reason why you're hand coding these sites. So if you're if you're trying to get a job somewhere and you actually want to be a coder and a back-end developer, um, you might just want to stick to hand coding these websites. But again, if you're trying to freelance or maybe just get your own sites out, that's when WordPress kind of kicks in. So what should you do in this, in this, um, in this scenario? So does this mean that everyone should start learning WordPress? Um, I would say no, it depends on what you're trying to do. Again, if you're trying to get the sites out, maybe it's worth it. But if you're not that experienced, if hand coding, if you're still just learning, um, anytime, you wanna build something in, uh, you're gonna to have to have this long learning curve. And if you're trying to get a website out to a client, uh, trying to meet a deadline, there's times where you can spend weeks just stuck on a certain feature, trying to figure out how to build it. So I don't think that you should always go ahead and learn WordPress, but if you're, um, if the reason is enough, if you're trying to just get websites out and building this out for clients, it might be worth spending a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months learning that and making yourself a little bit more productive. So. Um, one thing I also wanted to mention is that I mentioned WordPress has the themes and plugins. This doesn't mean custom sites don't have this. There are a lot of themes you can use. There are a lot of plugins. Just that integration process and how you put that into a custom built site is going to be a little bit different. So again, depending on where your skill level's at, if you feel pretty comfortable in integrating those plugins, um, hand coding that might be okay. It might be worth it. Uh, doesn't mean you have to build in your own contact forms and all that. You can use those plugins, but the integration just might be at a little bit more of an advanced level. So if you're trying to be a coder, uh, it still might be worth it for you. So um, the last thing I wanted to answer is why I didn't use WordPress on my own website. So I know I mentioned that in the beginning. Um, a few reasons. One is I don't know where I want to take my site. I kind of want to expand it. And I know that in that expansion process, I'm afraid to get to a point where if I start growing the website too big and I start adding these features, there's going to get a point where uh, WordPress won't be able to handle it and then I'm gonna have to do a full rebuild. So um, I just wanted to start off fresh, have a clean slate and be able to add in any feature I want and not feel limited and already build a site to scale. At the same time, I am trying to show people how they can hand code these kind of sites if they want to. So I wanted to show the features of adding your own slug fields, your own pagination, search forms, uh, a rich text editor, which is um, something I'm really excited about teaching you guys. So I wanted to build in those features. So that's kind of why I decided to hand code that. And at this point, I haven't used WordPress in about two years now. So I feel like at my level, 
uh, using something like WordPress would be a step back and I really would probably build a site faster by hand coding it than even using WordPress. So personally, I'm very comfortable with that. But um, again, depending on where you're at, you can kind of decide on that. So uh, that's kind of all I have for this video. I hope I answered a few questions. Um, maybe uh, I can kind of have this go with a final tutorial and readdress this and tell everyone, hey, you don't have to hand code these sites, but maybe refer them to this and give you some clarity on this. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in another video.